In a significant diplomatic endeavor, Nigerian President Bola Ahmed Tinubu recently embarked on a state visit to France aimed at enhancing the political, economic, and cultural ties between Nigeria and France. This visit comes at a crucial time when both nations seek to deepen their cooperation in various sectors, including trade, security, and cultural exchange. Touching down in Orly Airport in Paris, this high-profile visit, which unfolded against the backdrop of a rapidly changing global landscape, promises to redefine the contours of cooperation between Nigeria and France, a partnership vital not only for both nations but for broader West African region. On viewpoints where we discover perspectives and embrace dialogue, we share in developments from the international stage on Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu's trip to France with our guest, Mr. Yusuf Usman Bako, lecturer at the Department of History and International Studies, uh, Ibrahim Baramosi University, Niger State. Join us shortly. I'm Odiawa Eya. Welcome back to the Hello. show. The show is Viewpoints, where we discover perspectives and embrace dialogue. Joining us now on the show is Mr. Yusuf Usman Bako, lecturer at the Department of History and International Studies, Ibrahim Baramosi, Babangida University, Niger State. You're welcome to the show, uh, Mr. Usman Bako. Uh, thank you. Okay. I want to believe you're quite abreast of what's been happening regarding the trip concerning uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and uh, his trip to France. Uh, yes, um, uh, Tinubu's visit, uh, I think, uh, uh, is focused on bilateral relations between Nigeria and France. Okay. Uh, it's a bilateral engagement okay. uh, between Nigeria and France. Uh, to strengthen uh, relationship in some key areas. Okay, moving forward, President Tinubu was welcomed with a pomp and a ceremony befitting a leader of a nation that actually boasts the largest economy in Africa, which is no doubt about that. Now, the visit was marked by a series of high-stakes meetings where key issues, which have you just mentioned now, and I want to mention them concerning trade, security, and cultural exchange. Now, these uh, key sectors actually took center stage. Now, what are the potential uh, long-term impacts of the strengthened partnership between Nigeria and France regarding these key sectors, cultural exchange, economic activities, just to mention a few between Nigeria and France, on regional stability, economic growth in West Africa, and how might the influence, or how might this influence the broader dynamics of international relations on the continent? Um, I think to go straight to the point, um, the relationship has, uh, there are a lot of strategic, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, reasons attached to the relationship. Okay. Uh, as you're all aware, France is the global um, uh, power. Yes. It's a member of the United uh, Nations. It's a, it's a member of the United. It's, a, it's, a five, it's among the five permanent members of the United Nations. It's a leading member of the EU. So um, Nigeria's relationship with France um, is a clear demonstration of uh, Nigeria's commitment to engage the global powers. Uh, secondly, it will also strengthen Nigeria's um, key role, that is leadership role, particularly in the West African sub-region particularly in trying to address some of the few challenge, uh, challenges. Uh, similarly, it will also demonstrate uh, Nigeria's um, soft power capability to engage with uh, other global powers, uh, particularly uh, with the emerging challenges of uh, globalization. And uh, it's not only, uh, this relationship is not only significant for Nigeria. I think that is what you should also take note, uh, because um, mutual relationship of this nature is uh, of mutual benefit. Okay. France tends to gain. In fact, France tends to get a lot from this relationship, uh, because it's an opportunity for France to bolster its relationship with uh, Africa, given the setback uh, it has faced in some of our former colonies. So. Um, romancing with Nigeria is a kind of a very of a very significant um, 
uh, advantage for France. Uh, similarly, it will also help uh, France to navigate uh, the current geopolitical competition between her and other uh, power blocks, particularly China and Russia, who have already now uh, invaded Africa and are really um, trying to usurp some of the relevance and the dominance of France. So, okay. um, given some of these um, strategic reasons, uh, the two countries stand to be gained from the relationship. Uh, for Nigeria, economically, it's um, going to be beneficial, particularly it's going to help Nigeria to attract foreign investors. Um, to help Nigeria, uh, just like you rightly said, uh, it will uh, create a uh, uh, the foreign investment can uh, attract uh, factories, businesses, which can help uh, youth empowerment and other and other things. Uh, then, on the issue of uh, cultural exchange, um, well, uh, uh, th th there are not much to gain from uh, uh, France because um, France, um, uh, though we have seen it on the gallery, um, tried to tell the whole world that uh, they ought to like um, create that kind of uh, romantic relationship between Nigeria. I guess where you're coming from, so when it comes to France, there are always more of the romantics, right? Yes. Okay. So um, uh, I think uh, going back to history, uh, uh, right. France will not um, uh, a kind of uh, said uh, that uh, they are going to uh, we're not done to take it from us in terms of culturalism i think they, at the end of the day we only take from so um because of the history of assimilation i think if you know the history of Nigeria, uh, french colonization of africa the policy, uh, of assimilation. Similar, as the policy of assimilation yes the policy of assimilation is there so france um has this um cultural superiority and uh, they will never uh uh, say that uh, there are this are uh, i think the the whole thing about this cultural exchange is something just to like uh, say okay um we respect you we value you we also value your culture i think uh, i want to just stop at that level in terms of cultural exchange so um there, there are other key areas uh particularly uh, we have seen where um the president has already signed an mou Particularly, yes. in, uh, particularly on uh, mineral resource um, exchange exploration. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nigeria, as you all know, is uh, very rich in mineral resources, and um, uh, bringing in uh, foreign investors to explore it's going to really help the economy because we have a lot of untapped resources. So France uh, has some of these capabilities that can help, but um, uh, I think we need to also be careful. France has also been in uh, Niger. Uh, for a very long period of time, for over uh, for decades, yes. and um, we have not seen where uh, their presence has really impacted okay. uh, strongly. I mean, significantly when it comes to boosting domestic uh, economy. Uh, Let's get into what so you've think, actually uh, said there now, uh, Mr. Usman. Uh, Mr. Yusuf Bako, let's key into what you actually said there now. Are we trying to say now that the policy of uh, assimilation based on alliance now with, from the Francophone territories within the Western uh, Regional Bloc has not been impactful positively on its regions? And what will it now stay, stand to be now for Nigeria with the recent alliance? Because Nigeria has been pro-Anglophonic, if you will agree. The recent shift towards a francophone uh, alliance now, will it be beneficial for Nigeria in the long run, being their presence in other Western regions? Yeah, I think um, in international relations, uh, mutual, relations uh, of, uh, mutual relations of this nature are always beneficial, and mostly to both parties. But at the end of the day, uh, it depends on how you are able to maneuver uh, how you are able to strategize, how you are able to put, um, uh, I mean, uh, you agree on some of the key terms uh, regarding some of the agreements that we may likely be signed. Uh, so we have already seen MOU sign, but we don't know the content of some of those uh, agreements. And I think it's uh, uh, something of concern because um, 
the relationship between Nigeria and France is an asymmetric one. It's okay. a relationship of the unequals. Okay. I think we should be uh, aware of that. It's a relationship of on the uh, on equals. Uh, it's a relationship between developed nation and developing nation. It's a relationship between the rich and among the uh, and the poor among the poor nations. Okay. So it's a relationship between. Uh, let me uh, borrow um, uh, socialist terminologies. It's a relationship between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. Yes. It's a relationship between the exploiter and the exploited. Yes. So um, generally, uh, there is what is called cultural imperialism. Uh, and that is one area that... Um, so should we call uh, it uh, cultural, uh, this cultural imperialism or do we call it neocolonialism? Yes, in another dimension. Because... Uh, uh, we call it neocolonialism, uh, and uh, it's a way of uh, extending the colonization to a new era, okay. uh, a new era where they don't need to come here to put their men on seats to uh, manage the affairs of the state for them. Uh, we, they already have uh, ready. Uh, prepared people uh, within uh, already indigenous to the societies who are already uh, doing it. And that's why some people are criticizing um, the president uh, that he's romancing with some of these uh, countries as um, comparado bourgeois. And um, uh, at the end of the day, uh, our going there to sign some of those OMAUs uh, will end off like uh, mortgaging our economy to the Western world. Mm. So um, for me, I feel there are a lot of things to benefit. Uh, the only thing is how do we strategize? Uh, our leaders need to be uh, very patriotic. They need to prioritize um, national interests over and above their personal interests. And then they need to also negotiate very well and negotiate intelligently because um, uh, in the game of diplomacy, you need negotiators. So I, and that's why I, I have also concern uh, regarding the caliber of people at times you see around the president uh, going for some of those field trips. I had even on the social media, people criticizing uh, the president going together with his um, uh, son, Sheyi, appearing on the scene and all that. So uh, well, what I'm trying to just say here is um, it's good to travel with your family and all that things. But if you are going for such important national assignment, you need capable hands, you need experts. Yes, you need capable hands. You need presidential delegates that will scrutinize some of those agreements. Okay. You don't just sign agreements after champagne, uh, uh, coffee, and all that. You just sign agreement. So, um, because they have uh, some of their own repercussions. At the end of the day, this is what happened to France. Even though we can't really compare what happened to France. Uh, so, the former French colonies was uh, the case of. Um, uh, seeking for independence, when they are seeking for independence, some of those agreements were signed, which were a kind of uh, injurious to most of the former French colonies. Okay, let's go over uh, to what the... we have today. <laughs> okay, sorry to cut you, share, cut you there, Mr. Yusuf. Let's go over to the former French uh, colonies. There's no doubt about that. A majority of these French uh, colonies, francophone countries to be specific, whether it's Mali, Burkina Faso, uh, just to mention the other one, Niger. They've also had their fair share of overthrows and uh, upturns of uh, governments, where we have Wagner forces, just to mention a few, Russian flags also waving the air. Regarding regional security yes. now, how will Tinubu address this? Because whether we like it or not, he's from a civilian background and doesn't have that tactical background as a military person to also apply diplomacy here. Because when he first got in as a chairman of ECOWAS, he first of all declared war on a neighboring country, which, of course, you will agree is not advisable, diplomatically speaking. Now, in their diplomatic endeavors, yeah. how will you look at regional security regarding these francophone countries who are no longer in alliance with their former colonial masters, and we are now in alliance with their colonial masters? Uh, I think, uh, thank you for that question, um, because it's uh, very also important to this discussion. Uh, it borders on security. Um, 
our relationship with our neighbors is very, very important. In fact, uh, when you look at the in, uh, Nigeria's uh, foreign policy, it focuses more on, uh, you know, we have the concentric circle model, and it uh, gives more priority to our neighbors. Uh, when, you are, when you are safe in the hands of your neighbors, then you can sleep. I mean, when you are at peace with your neighbors, you can sleep. Uh, if you are not, then you can't sleep. So what is happening is uh, uh, Mr. President uh, made a kind of um, a, a mistake of getting, declaring uh, hostility with uh, particularly Niger uh, after the military coup in Niger. And um, it was really a wrong move because... Um, I believe uh, he took that decision considering the contagious nature of military coups. You know, military coups are contagious. Yes. And when, because when you look at the history of military coups in Africa, they are always contagious. Once it happens here, it spills over to the next country. Yeah. So um, Tinibu was uh, feeling that a military coup in Niger could spill over to Nigeria. Yeah. And that is why even during the last uh, protest, some of those issues started coming off where flags of uh, Russia were flied uh, during the demonstrations. Yeah. So um, it's really uh, bordering. Uh, it's something, it's a signal to the political elites that um, uh, geopolitics is at play. And then uh, uh, threat to democracy is also eminent. So, uh, for Nigeria, uh, for us to really move on and then to really ensure that um, we address some of this geopolitical competition between the power blocks, because the whole thing is a kind of um, uh, geopolitical and uh, competition block. between the Eastern and Western bloc. Okay. Uh, so uh, already uh, Niger is already romancing with the Eastern bloc, and now. Uh, France is using that opportunity to now shift. Yeah, you know, uh, that's why in international politics, there's no permanent friend, but permanent interest. Interest. So, uh, yeah, permanent interest. You don't have permanent enemy. At a point in time, a few decades, Nigeria was not in that very good relationship with France, particularly uh, politically. Uh, France has been really stampeding Nigeria. Or if you can remember the Bakasi Peninsula crisis uh, yes. between Nigeria and Cameroon, Cameroon. Uh, France was fully on the on, in support of uh, France, and uh, a lot of other issues also regarding Africa, particularly also in ECOWAS. Okay. Uh, France has really slowed down the process of integration in Af in West African sovereignty, particularly in trying to create a common currency. Yeah. with the common currency within the West African states. So uh, it's an opportunity now for Nigeria to read this relationship. Since now France is shifting to Nigeria, considering some of the uh, setback it has already faced in her former colonies, it's trying to shift the relationship. So Nigeria can utilize this opportunity to uh, strengthen uh, further relationship within ECOWAS, uh extend hands of relationship to the francophone nations um try to show them that uh, uh even though i know the relationship now is going to really affect their relationship because that is one of the implications now as nigeria is romancing with france other francophone nations particularly the ones that have already rebelled against france are already seeing nigeria as um uh, well, I don't want to say an outcast, but um, it's already Nigeria is trying to is creating a strong relationship between the two crowd between the two a kind of um, camps now. Okay. So All right. uh, Nigeria can uh, navigate through this particular process. I mean, this process of bilateral relations to cement further relationship, particularly on the issue of uh, integration. Okay, coming into, the relationship. coming into integration here now, uh, Mr. Uh, Yusuf, 
Tinubu's agenda now has to do with one of them, which is actually youth development. And the youth of today are easily malleable, if you will agree now. And this exchange program, there's been a development where there should be an exchange between both the French youth and the Nigerian youth to collaborate, learn and innovate together. Now, how might the proposed uh, youth focus exchange program between Nigeria and France influence future economic uh, landscape of both countries? Because I'm relating this now to the Eastern and Western bloc, because if we look at it, majority of the people who actually came out en masse in Niger to react were the youth. And even during the NBAD governance, where there was a spillover, where there were some threats about coups spilling over because if I will bury your world being contagious, we saw Wagner uh, Russian flags actually being waved here in Nigeria. Don't you see that a conflicting uh, issue here whereby malleable youths now are easily gullible to be taken over by both Eastern and Western bloc within Western uh, region soil of Africa? Yes. Um, uh, usually, uh, um Bilateral relations of uh, this nature um, uh, helps to facilitate a uh, stronger relationship in terms of exchange. Just like you rightly said, uh, it may help to, uh, like I also pointed out, uh, attract foreign investment. Foreign investments can provide job opportunities for our youth. Uh, and um, another aspect is uh, there are a lot of uh, also uh educational opportunities uh through some of this partnership and uh, some of these bilateral relations where opportunities may also be there for teaming youths to explore scholarship opportunities in france and um and maybe also other uh countries um western countries so that can also um contribute to a kind of addressing some of these uh, youth uh, crisis, uh, the crisis the youths, uh, Nigerian youths are facing. Uh, added to that, uh, what we are seeing uh, re regarding um, the youths' uh, reaction to some of these uh, things, I think uh, for me, uh, it's not, um, f uh, let's say, uh, Russia coming in to say uh, youths rebel, no, uh, it's clear demonstration. I think particularly what happened in Nigeria, uh, uh, flying the Russian flags is not something that has to do with uh, Russia coming in to say, uh, we want to take over the country or we, we want you to demonstrate. It was a kind of bad, end bad governance crisis. And it was like uh, a message to the political elite that we are tired of your type and uh, we don't care we don't uh, mind if military takes over so i think that is just the clear message regarding the flying of uh, flags for me uh so um for me uh, when you talk of uh cementing bilateral relations between nigeria and france to transfer skills and other things yes uh, it can help to address some employment challenges but uh france cannot transfer technology to nigeria i think that is the fact because we keep talking about this transfer of technology uh france will not allow in fact advanced countries will not allow transfer of technology okay it but has can, you tell us, can you tell us can you tell us can you tell us can you give us one uh specific reason why they will choose not to transfer technology to us uh if they do that then they become they may they are likely to become irrelevant because we have the mineral resources we have uh, the manpower. We only lack the skills and the technology. And okay. once they give it to us, what do you think will happen? Okay, hence the essence of the, so the exchange day, alliance. Uh -huh. So that's the essence. So at the end of the day, uh, they will only provide us with some of the few things that they will just want us to uh, have as just take home. Uh, basically, it's just... Um, uh, educational opportunities mostly. Okay. Uh, they just allow you 
they provide scholarship to Nigerian youths to go and school in some of their uh, universities and return back home. And okay. uh, we're already even seeing what is happening. Uh, when after uh, they still return, uh, we're already seeing brain drain. <laughs> after uh, acquiring the education, they utilize you there before they allow you to come back. So at the point, even when you are coming back, uh, you may likely not be able to really impact uh, uh, substantially to the economy because by then you should already be weak. So most of our youths are already moving there for the training. And once after the training, they retain them. You, uh, because even looking at the Nigerian economy, that is why those uh, that have gone there for training, they don't even like coming back. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Yusuf. From all indications, in some total, what I can get for you is that, or get from you rather, is that this exchange program is both uh, beneficial and also detrimental in the long run if we weigh it side by side, juxtaposingly. Thank you very much, Mr. Yusuf Usman Bato, yes. for making our time to join us on the show today. Thank you very much. Yeah, we hope to hear from you. From uh, it's time a, to it's time. a pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that was uh, Mr. Yusuf Usman Bako, Department of History and International uh, Studies, Ibrahim Baramasi Babangida University, IBB, Niger State, sharing his opinion on the bilateral relations between both nations, Nigeria and France to be specific. Now, ultimately, in conclusion, in a world where alliances are constantly in a shift, the strides taken during the visit signals a determined effort to forge a robust partnership that can withstand the test of time. It's been Viewpoint where we discover perspectives and embrace dialogue. I'm Odiawa AI. Thanks for watching.